What if I told you that there is something you can do that will unlock your ultimate potential as a musician, something that will allow you to create music at a level that few achieve, something that will open the door to worlds of new sonic possibilities? Well, guess what, pal? That thing exists and it's called practicing. However, you do wanna make sure that you use your practice time wisely. So today I'm gonna to show you the specific regimen that I use that made me the musician I am now. Before we get to it though, I'll quickly let you know that I've just launched a monthly ish Sammy G newsletter. It's totally free with exclusive content like tips, tricks, giveaways, licks, promos, that kind of stuff delivered to your email monthly-ish. It's basically just my version of a digital mini guitar magazine. If that kind of thing interests you, you can sign up at samuraiguitaristnewsletter.com. I'll also put up a link in the description. So a couple notes before we get to the nitty gritty of my practice regimen. I'm gonna show you how I practiced when I was at college for music. My studies were predominantly jazz based, but you can take whatever music that you love and swap out the specifics so that it makes sense for you. The goal here is not to go and do exactly what I did, but rather look at some of the bigger, broader methods that work for me, think about whether or not they might work for you, and then adjust them to your needs. I stuck to this regimen pretty religiously for about three years, spending five hours a day on it, four to five times a week. I don't think this is practical for most people, so you might wanna think about how you can condense the whole thing down, so maybe it's half as long, maybe you're removing certain sections that don't make sense for your musical goals, or maybe you're stretching the whole thing out so that it is a multi-day thing. Again, adjust accordingly, let's get to it. So here's what all the hype has been building towards. This is my practice regimen, broken down hourly. Now, you'll recall that I said this is a five hour practice regimen. Clearly, this is four hours, but I would find that I would always end up spending a bit of extra time one place or another. So I would plan on an hour buffer time to be used on whatever was getting me excited or for periodic breaks or whatever. So first on the docket is a 30 minute warm up. I wanna kick off the day with something that's fun, easy, enjoyable to get the fingers moving. The warm up sets the vibe for the whole practice. So I wanna make sure I'm doing something that leaves me excited about music. I'd end up doing one of two things for my warm up. The first of which being grabbing my trusty Beatles songbook, opening it up to a random song. Looks like we got <laughs> Wild Honey Pie, which just so happens to be my least favorite Beatles song of all time. But what I'll do now is put on the recording of that and just kind of play along to it. And by the way, if you're interested in any of the books that I mentioned today, I'll put up some Amazon links in the description. From there, I might try to pick up some of the riffs. If it's an easy song, I might do another one. And of course, it doesn't have to be the Beatles. You can use music from any band as long as it's not too hard and it's something you enjoy. The other warm up I like is grabbing a good old metronome turning it on, picking a chord, and just kind of jamming out with it. Let me show you an example. At this point, the juices are flowing, I'm feeling good, I'm ready to take on anything, and for the next little bit, I'm gonna work on this stuff that is really important, but to me, not as fun. The reason I do this stuff here is because my nature is whatever the opposite of a procrastinator is. I just like to get the bad stuff out of the way and then have fun. But on top of that, if I leave the stuff that I don't really like until later when I'm getting tired, I find it's much harder to focus on it and just way less productive. So the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna to allocate to technique or playing fast and efficiently. Now, this has certainly never been my strongest suit, but anything I can do is because I spent some time here. My method for practicing this stuff is as follows. Take a pattern, it doesn't really matter what it is. I'll do say three notes on a string, one after another, repeat on the next string, go all the way up and then reverse, going back down. Do this as fast as I comfortably can with a metronome like this. I'll keep track of the pattern I played and the speed at which I played it at in a practice journal so that next time I go to do this, I know where my starting point is. And every now and then I'll also do this at a speed that's incredibly easy like this. At this speed, I'll try to analyze my motions, making sure that everything is as efficient as possible before I work my way back up again to my threshold of comfort. I'll then repeat this whole thing with a variation on the pattern, or alternatively, I might do it with a scale, a musical passage, or something like that. Moving on is another 30 minute block, this one designated to ear training. This is an area that I struggled with greatly when I went to college, and my goal with ear training was learn to rely more on my ear. 
You want the connection between what you hear and what you play or sing to be clear and simultaneous, but I found that this muscle seemed underdeveloped, almost like my ears needed glasses. When I was working on this, I used a program called Aurelia, which is designated ear training software. However, now there are plenty of apps that do the exact same thing that are far cheaper or free. With the software, I would just have it go through the exercises, have it playing intervals, chords, melodies that I would then identify and see if I got right. And let me tell you, I had to start painfully simple with a lot of this stuff before gradually increasing the difficulty because these are things that I had never really worked on, but having spent the time working on this greatly increased my ability to use my ears now. Next up is 30 minutes of sight reading. Basically reading and playing standard notation that you've never seen before. For this, I'd pick something out of one of the books I have with single note melodies in it, try to play through it. Alternatively, I might work through one of the books I have that is specifically made for guitarist sight reading. Again, if you're interested in any of these, I've got some links in the description. I will say that this is the one area that I don't really know was time especially well spent. I was always okay enough at reading, but I had a number of professors who made it seem like this was a crucial skill to master if you want to have a career. However, I've never needed to sight read standard notation once in all of my professional days. That's not to say it isn't a very useful skill, especially if you want to play jazz, work on a cruise ship, or do musical theater or a number of other things. But for me personally, if I could have this time back, I would probably spend it on something else. We're now entering hour three, and I think of this as the time for gaining knowledge. And each day I would do one of three things to gain knowledge. One of the things I do is what I'll call next studies. A big part of the way that I approach guitar is understanding how each note I play can interact with any underlying chord. So for example, this D here would be the root of a D minor seven. It would be the flat seven of an E minor seven. It would be the fifth of a G seven flat nine. I spend a lot of time making up and doing exercises that train me to think this way while also trying to link it back to the ear training stuff. Let me show you an example of something I might have done. Say I'm in the key of C and I want to play through all of the seventh arpeggios of all the diatonic chords in this position here. Well, that would sound like this. Here's a C major seven starting on the major seventh of the chord. A D minor seven starting on the fifth. An e minor seven starting on the fifth. and so on. I would then repeat this whole thing one position higher. The idea is I'm training myself to see how all the chords in C major relate to the C major scale all across the guitar neck. I also might try to do the same exercise using only one string like this. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, there are countless ways that you can work on this stuff using single notes, arpeggios, chords, whatever. The point is that you're just trying to understand the guitar neck better so that you don't even need to think about this at all. That way, when you're out playing in the world, you automatically know what the impact of your note choice is gonna be. You know what notes are gonna be harmonious, you know which notes are gonna create tension, and now you get to go and just be creative with this information. Moving on, another thing that I might work on in this hour is learning to play a song. A large part of my schooling was playing songs. For my improv class alone, we needed to learn a new jazz standard every week. So say it was the week that we were learning the classic, there will never be another you. After getting a decent grasp of the melody and the chords, one of the things I would do is try to play the melody in a bunch of different places across the guitar neck. Here is the opening phrase of the song played in a bunch of different positions. Another thing I might do is find ways to use chords that I wouldn't normally use. So instead of letting my hand gravitate towards whatever's natural, I might do something like only playing the chords in this position here. And maybe now I'll try to do a bass line.
whatever I'm doing, it's just me trying to look at this song from as many different angles as possible. The deeper understanding I have of this tune, the easier it's gonna be for me to express myself over it. And the other thing I might do during this allotted part of my practice session is what jazz musicians call lifting, which is basically just figuring out somebody else's solo. One of the best ways to start learning how to play over a song is just to straight up copy one of the masters. So if it's a week where I'm learning There Will Never Be Another You from my improv class, I might transcribe the solo that the trumpet player Chet Baker played over this song. Doing this is like eating musical superfood. You're working on your ear training. If you're thinking about how each note relates to the underlying chord, you're working on your theory. You're also doing your neck studies and you're also increasing your vocabulary. It is one of the most important things that a soloist can do in my opinion. This now brings us to the fourth and final hour, which is taking whatever I did in the last hour and using it in a practical setting. This to me is the most fun and rewarding part of practicing. It's when you get to be creative and jam and see the fruits of your labor. If I had been working on my next studies, I might say use a D minor backing track and then do a solo in a way that makes me think about the relationship between my notes and my chords. For example, I could do a solo and really make sure I'm trying to highlight the chord tones or I could do something where I finish every line on the fifth of the chord, stuff like that. If I've been working on learning a new song, I might now go and record a backing track of me playing the chords and then try soloing and playing the melody over top or I could also flip this around so that I record myself playing a solo and the melody and then try improvising the chords underneath. And if I've been lifting a solo, the next step is to get to the point where I can play that solo along with the recording effortlessly. From there, what I'll do is take a backing track and see if I can play that solo from memory. And then the next step is to come up with my own solo based on the solo that I'd lifted. I can do this by improvising changes with the solo that I just learned, mixing up the rhythms, using some different notes, or just playing my own solo and interjecting licks from the other solo. At this point, we're probably five-ish hours into the whole thing. I'd probably be getting tired, and it'd be time to call it a night. The three years I spent doing this completely changed me as a musician. I went into college very much an amateur and then left with the skills that allowed me to have a professional career. I will also note, though, that practicing was only part of the equation. I was playing music in my classes, in my private lessons. There was lots of jams, rehearsals, gigging, all that kind of stuff is a very big part of the musical development as well. Music would very much take up the bulk of my time, but I would make an active effort to make sure I was doing some stuff outside of music. Having some balance and some breathing room in the equation allowed me to keep this going for as long as I did. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That is the practice regimen that changed my life. Remember, if you'd like to sign up for my newsletter and get free exclusive tips, tricks, blurbs, promos, and that kind of stuff delivered straight to your email inbox monthly-ish, you can sign up at samurai-guitarist-newsletter.com. Links in the description. I'm gonna be using this to get out some of that high quality Sammy G content that just makes more sense in a different medium than videos. And trust me, I am well aware that getting too many emails can come across as spammy and obnoxious. Don't worry, I am making a concerted effort not to do that. Thank you all for watching. If you wanna check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. An extra big thank you to everyone who supports my channel through Patreon. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet, I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.